Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio, and today we are diving deep on alignment and phase. If you haven't checked out my previous video on how to identify phase issues and correct them, I suggest you start there. We're going to go even further and see how phase can affect transient smearing, comb filtering, and also take a look at how we could spectrally optimize our audio when combining more than one signal. Let's start with a common example, which is what happens when we take a direct signal and combine it with a mic signal. Here's our direct signal. And our mic cabinet. Zoomed in, you could see that our polarity of the waveform starts off matching, but then starts to drift. Let's listen to what happens as we gradually add one to the other. I added an EQ to help me flip the polarity. Listen as we bypass and engage it. Obviously, flipping the polarity 180 degrees does not help. Let's select both regions and open up Auto Align 2. I'll play them and hit Align. We can see that these regions were only off by two samples, but the spectral alignment will help us to make sure that our audio is optimized for mixing or processing. Let's commit this and listen again. We can now hear the signal blend together much better and visually we see much less drift between the waveforms. Now that we have better alignment, we can process both of the signals at once and we know we're optimized for them to work together. In this next example, I have three microphones on an acoustic guitar. Two are direct, and one is a room microphone. Now the easy thing to do would just be use one microphone, and you're safe. But we want to make sure that we have the ability to combine all three mics and make sure they're aligned. Let's take a look. Let's flip between our three microphones. We'll use the EQ again to check polarity between the mic pairs. The direct mics work okay. Let's try the bridge in room. I think this might benefit from a 180 degree polarity flip. Now here's the room and neck. This might also benefit, but it emphasizes some weird resonances. Now, if I pan the direct mics, things seem to improve, but this just masks the problem. It 
If you want panned acoustic guitars, record them twice rather than panning two microphones from one guitar. You will always have better results and be more mono compatible. Let's look at the waveforms. We can see why the polarity reversal helped on the room, but we also see there are alignment issues with the bridge. We can try to manually shift the regions, but that does not correct the underlying issue. Let's pull up Auto Align 2 and see what happens. I have a significant time shift, especially in the room, which makes sense because it's further away. And the bridge needs spectral adjustments to help with some of those resonances. Now, if we zoom in, everything appears much more aligned. While my audio isn't perfect, I do find that we are drastically improved, which allows us the opportunity to achieve a better balance and then process the tracks as one group that we know will be more consistent. Now let's take a look at what's probably the most common case of phase problems, which is multiple microphones on a drum kit. We'll start with direct microphones, and by direct microphones I'm talking about snare, kick drum, and overheads. We all know that our top and bottom snare microphones will probably have phase issues, so let's look a bit closer. We can see there are major problems. But when we check flipping the polarity, things get much worse. Let's see why. Let's zoom out and look at where we were analyzing the region. We were actually looking at the bass drum hits being picked up by the snare mic. If we actually look at the snare hit, you could see our polarity matches. And this is only because I made sure to flip the polarity on my preamps prior to recording. So one of the benefits of using auto line is actually just to make sure that we're looking at the right thing and not making visual adjustments that make our audio worse. Now, if we look at the kick, snare, and overheads, we can see that they all have significant time differences. Let's auto-align our tracks. We see there's a good amount of sample shifting so that everything aligns with the snare top. There's also some good spectral adjustment. But before we commit this, I want to talk a little bit about my personal workflow. As you can see, I have some quantized regions saved in my playlist due to the use of Beat Detective. Therefore, I'm going to quantize all of my tracks first and then use Auto Align. Once again, you see my settings, but this time I'm going to click the kick and select Set as Performance Time. This makes sure that any shifting shifts to the kick, which I already used as the basis for my quantizing. There's a ton more clarity, body, and punch. And as you can see, my regions are much more tightly aligned. Okay, let's take our drums even further. I'm going to add some Tom microphones, room microphones. I have a special mic where I've crushed a room mic with a real resonant tone. And then we'll see what happens when we start to add samples to our drum kit. Here's a kick sample added with a trigger program. We can see that there's a time difference between the kick and the triggered sample, even though, in theory, these programs are supposed to align them for us. Also, there's some spectral adjustment needed. 
Of course, we want to set the acoustic kick as the performance time, as it's the one that's actually locked to the grid. Now the sound is much tighter. And we can see that the kicks are perfectly aligned. You can see that the snare sample also has alignment issues. To save some time, I'm going to switch to an aligned version of it. I can now make adjustments to my drum kit with the confidence that all the triggers are aligned. Let's take this even further. Here's my drum room added. We could see the room doesn't line up, which makes sense because the room microphone is further away. Now this might be controversial to some people, but sometimes aligning your distant room mics will help to get a punchier sound while still retaining the feel and sound of the room. Listen as I switch between the two. And here's my resonant crushed room mic soloed. We could see the alignment issues. Listen as I switch between the aligned and non-aligned versions. I've now introduced three Tom microphones. You can see that they don't align with the room, but look at the relationship differences as I switch from the original to the fully aligned room and tom mics. Now listen to the difference. Listen to these four kick samples that are manually added. You would assume that sample sets should all start perfectly and be compatible. Even with different kick samples, you can have phase issues. You see that there's a time difference and ton of spectral adjustments needed. Listen before and after. The aligned versions are more compatible and consistent for layering with our other drums. Now we could copy these regions as a group and duplicate them around our session. And now we have a fully aligned drum kit that's ready for mixing or any type of processing. Thanks for watching. How are you dealing with alignment in your mixes? Let us know in the chat below. And as always, please help support the channel by liking the video and hitting subscribe.